so this answer writing strategy approach for public administration so <coughs> so this answer writing approach to the public administration what are the fundamental things that we have to keep in mind so answer writing generally becomes a mystery for the aspirants uh, because aspirants generally do not practice so uh, what are the things that we have to keep in mind uh, before writing the answers so these are the Uh, descriptive questions in the mains and there is a word limit for everything and the focus is on the analytical abilities so what is this analytical skill or analytical ability It is the ability to analyze the things from multiple dimensions so with a focus this analytical abilities would insist on testing your intellectual traits and depth of understanding of the subject it depends on the depth of understanding the subject so it is not the depth of knowledge of the subject so depth of knowledge of the subject is you will earn a phd degree if you have the depth of knowledge of the subject but it is not your intention to get a phd in public administration your intention is to get marks so you need to have depth of understanding of the subject and adequate intellectual skills intellectual skills followed by some writing skills so these are the things that are tested in the or uh, that are focused in the answer writing so what is not so much important is merely the range of information and the memory is not important so how much you have learned is not important how much you have understood is important the more you learn means the less you remember so you don't have to learn too many subjects too many concepts whatever the concept that you are learning should be learned with an adequate understanding that's all so as i always suggest you that don't read too many books so why don't read too many books because if you keep reading many books as the number of books is increasing the number of revisions will decrease so therefore what is more important is revise recall repeat this is all important in the descriptive examination or any other exam in the competitive exams any paper this is the common point that you have to remember revise recall and repeat that means this revision activity should be repeatedly done so suppose if you are reading a one hour in a one hour reading one hour study twenty five minutes on an average you'll give a first reading 20 minutes you make a note then 15 minutes you revise the things you revise whatever you have read and you have written in the notebooks and this 5 minutes 
you have to recall this is what we have to do during the course of one hour of study this is to be repeated every hour after one hour yeah you, you, you have to take a 5 minutes break then again uh, another one hour do the same exercise that is 25 minutes of first reading whatever you have read first reading whatever the topic that you have read then 20 minutes you have to note note down the point that what we have read from then 15 minutes you have to revise everything then last 5 minutes in the one hour should be recalled so this is the general procedure of uh, uh, understanding and learning the things otherwise if you keep on reading a book like a novel you can't remember the things you may be remembering the concept but you may not be able to remember the subject as a whole in general that is required for answering the questions so then uh, in public administration or any other optional the fundamental standard of the question is based on the honors degree honors degree means which is neither graduation nor post graduation general graduation is 3 years post graduation is another 2 years honors degree is 4 years degree so between the graduation and post graduation you will have this honors degree so uh, honors degree is the standard of question that is being given by the upsc and but however remember that though it is a honors degree question paper the standard of the question paper is of honors degree the test of fundamental knowledge of the subject is given fundamental knowledge of the subject from every chapter is required and what is being tested is the test of relevance for a career in the civil service more more so relevant to the public administration is because public administration is directly associated with the civil service exam and civil service as a career civil service as a job so public administration concepts will be given in the question paper to test your abilities to find your career in the civil service and basic understanding of all the relevant issues ability to analyze and ability to take a view on conflicting issues is the things that are tested then what is the word limit generally the word limit for the questions in public administration there are two types of questions in public administration one is uh, short answer questions and long answer questions so before knowing the word limit we need to know the question paper structure so the structure of the question paper there are two sections section a and section b in the section a there are question number 1 a to e then question number 2 question number 3 question number 4 so more or less this is the structure of the question paper and same is the section b also question number 5 a to e 6 a and b 7 a to c 8 a and b so this entire question paper is for 250 marks right totally 250 marks so where you have to answer any five questions that means each question 50 marks you're supposed to answer five questions and each question carries 50 marks and out of these five questions question number 1 and 5 are compulsory
So within question number one, there are five areas. Five questions are given. And within question number five, five questions are given. So this question number one with five sub-questions, question number five with five sub-questions are compulsory. And each question in question number one and five, each question for 10 marks. And after answering question number one and five, you have to answer three more questions. And from the remaining three, for the remaining three, select at least one question from each section. You have to select one question from each section for the remaining three questions. So that means after question number one and five, you are left with two, three and four in the section A, six and seven, eight in the section B. Out of the six questions, you have to write answer three questions. That means you should not choose all the three questions from one section. You have to choose at least one question from each section. Suppose if you have selected sec uh, second question and third question from section A, you should not answer fourth question. The third question should be written from either 6, 7 or 8. Or you have selected 7 and 8 from section B, you should not answer the sixth question. You should answer one question from the 2, 3 and 4. Any one of the 2, 3 and 4. Any two questions may be selected from one section. One question must be selected from the other section. So totally five questions. So again there are A and B sub-questions in the question number one, uh, question number two and question number four. A and B two questions are there. And section in the question number three and question number seven again, there are uh, 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 two questions as such. So where there are two questions means 2AB or 3AB, this second, third, fourth, six, seven, eight. Each question carries 25 marks each into two because you have to answer two questions from each one. So for the 50, question, 50 marks answer, uh, in the question number three sorry, and question number seven, three questions are there. So where, say suppose 3A, 20 marks, 3B, 20 marks, 3C, 10 marks, 7A, 7B, 7C may also be given in the same structure. Sometimes it may also happen like uh, 7A, 15 marks, 7B, 15 marks, 7C, 20 marks. Even in such structure, the questions have been given. So depending upon the marks that you are getting, that you are being given, suppose question number one, A to E, question number five, A to E, you have 10 marks questions. For 10 marks questions, word limit, should be 150 to 200. For a 10 marker, you have to give it, you have to answer the question between 150 to 200 words. And accordingly, proportionately, you have to answer the questions in this word limit, proportionately. Say if it is 20 marks question. For a 20 marker, you may be giving uh, 250 words to 300 words. For a 25 marks question, 300 to 350 words. So that is the range of marks 
that would be allotted uh, depending upon the number of marks being allotted, the number of words you have to use. Generally, the word limit is not mentioned for question number 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. Only marks are allotted. Word limit is mentioned only for the question number 1 and 5. So, usually we cannot keep counting the number of uh, words for each question. So, then uh, in realistic terms, how this answer has to be presented? See, <coughs> in all, you are supposed to answer for question number one, five questions. Question number five, also five questions. So there are ten, ten questions in all. And say if you selected question number two and question number three, two questions, three questions. And one is selected from the section B. Say if you have selected say question number seven, three questions. So <coughs> it is around 8 questions. In all, you are answering 10, 18 questions. So, uh, on an average, uh, you would be spending 10 minutes for each of these questions. Not more than 10 minutes. Not. And in fact, it should be less than 10 minutes. Because to read the question paper, it will take at least 30 minutes. Only to read the question paper. Because there are eight questions and uh, uh, in general it will be looking like eight it would be looking like eight questions but how many questions totally are there there are 10 questions to be read and answered in question number one and five only you have to read all the questions right only to read the question paper you have to spend 30 minutes and remaining within uh, remaining to, uh, 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 two and a half hours meaning uh, for the 150, 150 minutes. The 150 minutes you have to answer 18 questions. So that means it would be less than 10 minutes for each. And on an average it, you cannot spend 7 minutes to 10 markers. not more than 7 minutes for a 10 mark question. And it is not possible for you to maintain the same standard of timing and word limit for all the questions. Why word limit has to be maintained? Word limit is the required to be maintained because you have to answer all the questions, all the 18 questions given in the question paper. That is the primary criteria. Only when you answer all the questions, you, will get, you can expect maximum marks. That is possible to get the as many marks as possible. Because before the quality, quantitative element in the UPSC exam is important. People say it is quality important, but before the quality, quantity is important. What is quantitative element? Answering the questions in seven minutes. Answering all the 18 questions in public administration, if it is it would be 20 questions in the general, general studies. And that is the primary quantitative element. Secondly, answer all the questions within 180 minutes. The second quantitative element. Answer within 7 minutes each question each question is supposed to be answered within 7 minutes so that is the primary criteria related to the quantitative aspect you have to answer all the 18 questions then only you can expect anything between 140 and above so uh, otherwise it is not possible to uh, score more marks scoring more marks secondary element and the secondary element of importance is only the qualitative element. 
primary element of importance is the quantitative element. If you observe these quantitative elements in answering the question, that only will give you to fetch the give you opportunity to fetch more number of marks. And after understanding this element, quantitative element, so out of this, say suppose 18 questions, you know, at the most you can answer 8 questions, you may be giving best answers. You can give a best answer only for the 7 or 8 questions, maximum. And for 6 questions, you may be giving average answer. And for four questions, we will be giving worst answers. But you should give the answer, though it is worst. Because however best we may read the things, however best we may prepare, for four questions definitely in any paper, not just in public administration, for any paper, you remember this, that you will not know the answer or you know the answer very limited way or you think that you know the answer but it will go wrong. So the answer that you give would be the worst. Or you will not have adequate and ample time to answer the question fully. So therefore, suppose if you are spending a large amount of time in answering the first eight questions, that is for which you have the best knowledge of the answer. When you spend more time on those, you have to compromise with the answers that you are going to give in the end. So those four questions will end up with the worst answers only. So nobody, therefore, nobody can get 250 out of 250 in a paper. Because for four answers, you have to deduct those, those marks fundamentally, primarily. You have to expect fuller marks. What is fuller mark for these eight questions? So suppose these eight questions are at 10 marks questions, meaning for eight questions you have to get 80, but you will end up only say 60, 60 marks. This is the best way, best uh, possible answer, the marks that you are going to get. 60% in the optional paper, 60% in the optional paper is the maximum, answer, maximum marks that anybody can get. And for the remaining 10 questions, you will not get 60% marks. So only your practice will make you to even answer these 10 questions also in this 8 category. As much as you practice, depending upon the practice that you do, these average answers and worst answers can, solve, can also be made into, transformed into a best answer. So usually why people will not get good marks is because of this kind of approach that you adopt in the examination hall, however best you may be preparing. And of course, the best aspirant in the country would be getting top 100 ranks. And these best aspirants in the country who are getting the top 100 ranks would be the people who are doing the practice. And they are trying to convert these average answers and worst answers into best answers through the practice only. Therefore, they could able to get 60% marks. So the 60 percentage depends upon how best you practice these eight questions as well as these questions as well. Not only these eight questions, you have to, the eight questions also should be practiced so that you will confine your word limit to the given number of words and you confine your time within the specified time. You finish your answer within the specified time. So if you finish your answer within the specified time, then it will be possible, it will be possible to convert these average answers into best answers and worst answers also into best answers. So that only depends upon, because for these remaining four questions, minimum knowledge, you, will, you may be having either minimum knowledge or you may be using less than one required words because of the lack of time. And as a result, these four answers will remain as the worst answers in it. So what you have to do in enhancing these possibilities of getting the 60% marks. The style of answering the questions is, the first criteria is style of answering the question. So the style of answering the question should be descriptive as well as 
point wise method in, the, in both the ways descriptive format as well as point wise format should be adopted in answering the questions because suppose for any answer the basic formula basic standard procedure is answer uh, structure of the answer is first there will be introduction and the main body and a conclusion so this is the basic standard answer format so when you are following this standard answer format introduction should be descriptive main body point wise conclusion should be descriptive that is in a paragraph a descriptive one is a paragraph of 3 to 4 lines introduction 3 to 4 lines of a paragraph main body pointers there should be pointers of argumentation and a conclusion should be a 3 to 4 lines of a descriptive paragraph so that is the first thing that you have to do in converting the average and worst answers into best answer second thing that you need to know is identify certain things so what is to be identified identify question tag identify demand of the question so what is a question tag a question tag is a uh, it can be anything ranging between comment discuss analyze so such things are the question tags and understand the question and understanding the question depends upon understanding the demand of the question so what is the demand of the question so demand of the question can be understood through proper reading of the question what is expected from the question main aspects to be understood and then you have to decide upon sequence of the question so decide upon the sequence of the questions to be answered and do a mental mapping of the question mental mapping of the answer is required and what is the sequence of the question first sequence of the question implies which question uh, the moment you read the question paper you can understand the confident areas and non confident areas identifying those confident areas will be the first priority for you to answer the on which you are well uh, prepared and thoroughly prepared and you are sure of answering the questions those questions have to be identified and you have to decide upon which question has to be uh, answered first whether fifth question has to be answered first or first question has to be answered first you will be given a booklet and within the booklet only you have to answer those questions so uh, but the sequence of the answers will be decided by you self and <coughs> an answer must contain the components of the answer facts primary components are the concepts 
facts and concepts have to be analyzed. So what is this fact and fact conceptual element? Fact is a reality. And concept is a value that is required to be analyzed. Concepts are certain values. Values are those things which you consider good and bad. In the examination terminology, this is called merits. and demerits and <coughs> finally these demerits require solution how to overcome these issues this is the analysis analysis of the concepts is nothing but understanding an idea then identifying the merits and demerits of the issue then giving the solutions and generally people think that an answer should contain a grand language, a flowery language, complex sentences. But reality is, examiner will understand better an answer to be understood by the examiner in a better manner if it is simple language, if you are using the simple language. And if you are avoiding the flowery language, if you are avoiding the complex sentences, you should avoid the complex sentences. Don't write the complex sentences. Don't use the nouns and verbs don't use the social media language and don't commit any grammatical mistakes. Don't commit the grammatical mistakes also. So these are the three things that you need to keep in mind. Don't use the nouns and verbs. That will increase the, verb, the verbose. Verbose means number of words to be used increases. If you use the nouns and verbs, your answer becomes verbose and you will run out of the time. Don't use the social media language and don't use, don't commit the grammatical mistakes. These three don'ts should be kept in mind in, in your language process. That in simple, your answer should be clearly presented with a clear thought. When you have the thought, when your thought is clear, your answer will be presented in a clear manner. Why clear presentation is required? Because the examiner has to understand it. And it should be succinct. The succinct nature of the answer means in a brief summarized format. And it should be relevant to the question. Your answer must be relevant to the question. Irrelevant answers are not encouraged. And it should be meaningful and logically concluded. And even you should not ignore the handwriting also. Handwriting should be need not be calligraphic. Handwriting has to be simple and legible. Legible handwriting is adequate and your handwriting will improve depending upon the what kind of pen that you are using also. Because as far as possible, a uni ball pen is good for improving your handwriting as well. Because in the examination, you cannot use ink pen or gel pens. I think. So uni ball pen is suggestible something like a cello butterfly. Cello butterfly pen is useful. 0 0.5 mm or 0 0.7 mm ball pen would be useful because it is uh, waterproof also. And examiner will be uh, in a positive mood to give you more marks if you are using the blue ink rather than the black ink. Even these minor things will also uh, help you to improve the marks. And <coughs> Then in answering the questions, uh, what is the kind of approach that you need to adopt? So as I told you earlier also, the answer style So a rule of thumb to present the answer. is a 4C approach. Your answer should be based on the 4C approach to public administration. This 4C approach is the context, 
concept consequences and contemporaneous so these are the four c's that you need to present your answer so generally you would be having difficulty in writing the introduction so the context of the question should be the introduction the introduction will contain the background or the context in which the question is being given and in the concept it is a main body the consequences and the concept is the main body of the answer so introduction will have the background in which the question is being given and in the concept you would be writing about the meaning merits demerits features principles those dimensions so this uh, consequences will have the merits and demerits meaning and features are the concept consequences includes merits and demerits or advantages and disadvantages pros and cons and this contemporaneous means relevance to the present contemporaneous is the relevance to the present that is the current issue current dimension of the issue so in public administration the current relevance depends upon two things so the current relevance is characterized by information and communication technology and the lpg impact of the new technology impact of the liberalization privatization and globalization so these two dimensions should be incorporated at relevant areas in public administration for example uh, most recent thing like <coughs> so suppose in the paper 2 you have chapter 1 that is evolution of indian administration so in the evolution of indian administration you have the topics like kautilya sardhashastra mughal administration and british legacy so based on that a question may be given like indianization of the legal system indianization of legal system in india has begun with the repealing laws comment so what is this indianization of the legal system indianization of uh, public services was one of the topics in the first unit 
So Indianization of public services means all the public services in India, including judiciary, executive, legislature, they are supposed to be made Indian from the Western because we are a colonial legacy. We have a colonial legacy. So it began with the repealing laws after the independence. The repealing laws means the laws intended to the rep repeal the colonial rules and regulations. The laws that are intended to repeal the colonial rules, regulations are, these are known as the repealing laws. That is, what is to repeal? Repeal is to abolish. A law is which is intended to abolish the colonial rules and regulations are the colonial, the repealing laws. A law is made to abolish another law. Generally we call this as sunset legislation. Sunset law. A sunset law is a law that sets the sun for a particular another law. So we have uh, across 2014, then between 2014 to 2023, five such laws were enacted. Between 2014 to 2023, five repealing acts have, have been enact enacted, with which nearly these repealing acts abolished around 1500 colonial rules. <coughs> so these things may be presented even in the subjects like governance and polity also. And, and the most recent being Indian Penal Code, Criminal Procedure Code, Indian Evidence Act, these are proposed to be repealed and replaced with three new laws. So in 2023, and three new bills have been proposed in the Lok Sabha to repeal the Indian Penal Code of 1860. Because these laws were enacted by the British government after the uh, Sipai Mutiny in 1858. Sipai Mutiny is being concluded and the administration has been given to, shifted from East India Company to the British Crown directly. So to further prevent any possibility of such Sipai Mutiny, several legislations were enacted. One such legislation was Indian, Indian Penal Code. Later on, Criminal Procedure Code was made and Indian Evidence Act was made and these were colonial rules existing for almost more than 160 years. And we have been following them blindly, unnecessarily. There is no Indianization of this legislation. And now three new legislations have been proposed by the Union Home Minister. Three bills are presented in the Lok Sabha to repeal those old laws and to introduce the new legislations in the criminal justice system. For example, a criminal case is to be settled within three years. That is the one of the major proposal. For the rape of a minor girl, death punishment is imposed. Definite death punishment will be imposed. So this is the contemporary issue. And those contemporary issues have to be inc incorporated in the answers, depending upon how, what kind of answer that you are writing. Similarly, in the paper one, so in the paper one, in the chapter two, where there is theories of administration, so in the theories of administration, also we have scientific management. So, regarding the scientific management, we can expect a question like, Artificial intelligence, 
based on the artificial intelligence ai is only a furthering of artificial intelligence is only a furthering of the scientific management in the world of technology explain in the context of taylorism 4.0 so <coughs> in the 1910 scientific management was proposed during the second re uh, industrial revolution first industrial revolution took place in britain second industrial revolution took place in america and this scientific management was one of the developments in the second re industrial revolutions and then uh, at present we are experiencing the fourth level of taylorism fourth version of the taylorism so earlier we have uh, two more tayloristic ideologies fourth version of the taylorism means fourth version of scientific management Now, what is this fourth version of the scientific management, which is known as the Taylorism 4.0? Taylorism with the application of the artificial intelligence. Scientific management objective. What is the objective of the scientific management? Objective of the scientific management is to make things happen with efficiency and economy. Efficiency and economy are the primary criteria for the scientific management. Basic criteria for the scientific management. And that was the idea behind. the development of the scientific management principles by taylor to improve the efficiency and effectiveness in the productivity industrial production improve the productivity gain the maximum prosperity then uh, after the scientific management was introduced the formulas of scientific management principles of scientific management were continued depending upon the changes that are occurring in the industrial sector now industrial sector is managed not by the electricals not by the electronics not merely by the electronics in the beginning scientific management in the early 1910s scientific management intended to improve the efficiency and economy in industrial manufacturing by the mechanics mechanics transformed into electricals electricals transformed into electronics now mechatronics is the contemporary technology that is being used what is this mechatronics mechatronics is the fourth version of the scientific management that is mechanics plus electronics with the use of the electricals by the application of the electrical things is the taylorism 4.0 which uses the robotics mechatronics is nothing but the robotic technology and these robots operates by artificial intelligence which will improve the efficiency and economy and ultimately the productivity and prosperity precision is improved with the use of the robotics which operates through the artificial intelligence <coughs> so it is the nothing but you don't have to have a, a technical parameters knowledge of the technical parameters of what is artificial intelligence what all you need to know is the application of the artificial intelligence in the industrial sector to improve the management what management will do management objective is to improve the productivity reducing the expenditure production expenditure and improve the efficiency of the employees so that is the kind of things uh, uh, that the scientific management is adopting into the system but with the use of the artificial intelligence and which is known came to be known as the taylorism 4.0 that is the application of the mechatronics mechanicals mechanical technology and electronic technology which will operate by the electrical technology so that is how with the influence of the information technology such kind of questions are are being given and moreover in the recent times the nature of the question is also getting normal as many people think that it is getting tougher day by day but 
from 2019 onwards if you see the question paper the question paper is getting uh, generalized more and more generalized and easier suppose if you look at a question given in 2002 2022 every human organization a straight question from your notes every human organization <coughs> shall start from system 1 shall start from system 1 and ultimately end up with system 4 end up with the system 4 comment on likert statement So, <coughs> this is the question given in the 2022 public administration paper 1 from the theories chapter. So, I dictated you in the notes also uh, that uh, according to Rensis Likert. So, Rensis Likert said, spoke about the leadership theories and one of these leadership theories is based on the system 1, 2, 3, 4. System 1 is based on the autocratic management. Then system 2 is benevolent leadership management system 3 is consultative management and system 4 is democratic management so organizations have to transform from autocratic style of management to democratic style of management i have also told you that the transformation from 1 2 3 4 should be a b c d should be remembered as a b c d a for a autocratic b for a benevolent c consultative d for a democratic style of management so, just description of these four styles of management in the beginning. Then after the description of the meanings of system 1, 2, 3, 4, you should tell about why this transformation is required. The reasons for the transformation. Then consequences of the transformation. What will happen when a system will transform from 1 to 4, when it settles at one fourth level, what will happen? The consequences of it. Merits and demerits. Because the system 4 is not only good, there are also some limitations in the system for democratic management. Because democratic management is not suitable to the emergencies. Democratic management is misunderstood. Democratic management cannot be used uh, in case of a chaos, chaotic, chaotic conditions. Suppose in the conditions like uh, Manipur. In Manipur, would you apply the system for management to bring the situation under control? Impossible. To bring the situation under control in Manipur, you have to use the system 1 only, not system 2 or 3 or 4. System 1 has its own advantages, 4 is having its own advantages. Suppose if you take the Indian constitution as an example, it, in normal times it acts like a federal federation and in the emergency it behaves like a unitary government, so like an autocratic system. So there are problems with the system 4 also. Transformation is not good so, and even in the countries like India and uh, Latin American countries, Asian and Latin American countries, system 4 is not always a successful style of management. Because the people in these countries, Asian, African and Latin American nations, the people are, uh, they like to be controlled and guided by someone. They don't want to be independent at any age, not just in the younger age. Even at the age of 60, 70 also, people wanted to be dominated by others people wanted to be controlled by others. So they prefer system 1 or 2 rather than 3 and 4. So system 1 as well as system 4, all the systems are useful depending upon the situation that you have to adopt a particular system. In the military, system 4 is not useful. Only system 1 is useful. And in a uh, software organization, in a creative organization like 
advertising agency. You need to use the system for in a software company or an advertisement agency or aerospace laboratory. In those organizations, system four will be useful. But in the organizations like military, system one will be useful. So there is nothing wrong with the system one and two. They are as good as system three and four, depending on the system situation that you need to adopt a specific system. That should be the criteria for answering the questions. So answers sometimes the questions are straightforward, not only influenced by the contemporary aspects. So that is how uh, examiner may give the questions based on uh, these aspects and your answer should contain the dimension, the four dimensions. That is in the introduction you should give the context of the question. Then concept, explain the concept. Concept is based on the meaning, nature and scope and the features. Consequences, merits and demerits, pros and cons. Then uh, give the solutions also. Then conclusion uh, and any, at any point of these aspects you may give the contemporaneous that is relevance to the current world. If you are given a straight answer, straight question related to the uh, something like a traditional question, a static a stock question is transformation of uh, organization from system 1 to 4. Even at present also these theories are useful even under the conditions of artificial intelligence. If you apply the artificial intelligence, you can adopt system one. If you use the modern technology, you can adopt the system one managed style of management. Because in the when you are using the machines, robots, you don't have to be democratic. There is no need for using the democratic approach to the me me machines. And when you are dealing with the people, you may be democratic. A combination of system one to four is re required in the present global order. So under the, you can, you are applying the LPG also. If you are applying the LPG in the conclusion, if you use this word like, in the context of the global order, system four may be useful. But in the countries like China, system one was successful. So <coughs> there is no uniform method of managing the people. People management depends upon various aspects, context, and the conditions in which you are managing the people. The context of management means it is whether it is a normal situation or abnormal situation. Or the conditions, whether you are managing the people under the communist ideology or capitalist ideology. Depending upon the con conditions also, that the style of management will be, uh, will, will be variant. So that's how the answers have to be answered. 